the .fit file. So I, this might be a proprietary one. I'm not exactly sure, but so I connect it with Strava and the Apple Health framework, so it connects to my Apple Watch and stuff. So, what a perfect file extension, though .fit. Right? Yeah. <laughs> Welcome to Second Opinion, the reviews show here on the Nexus. I'm your host, Brian Mitchell, and today I will be joined by Ian R. Buck so we can talk about the Wahoo Kicker Snap and Wahoo Ticker. Find the show notes for this episode at thenexus.tv slash SO110. So, Ian, um, you're, you're a big cyclist, right? Uh, I'd like to think of myself as a pretty skinny cyclist, but, you know. There you go, yeah. Uh, you're, you're probably the, everyone I know in my life, the person who cycles the most and is the most determined. And so I thought it would be good to talk with you about the Wahoo Kicker Snap and Wahoo Ticker, uh, which is a smart uh, indoor bike trainer and then a, a heart rate monitor that kind of pairs with that. Yeah. And to be clear here, like I am somebody who, like my relationship to cycling is a very utilitarian, it's very goal oriented, right? If I need to go somewhere, if I need to do something, like I do it on my bike. Um, but like, I don't I do not do it like recreationally a whole lot. And so I, I have never owned an indoor bike trainer um, or anything like that. So essentially I'm kind of here to just like a- ask the stupid questions that somebody who has never used a product like this yeah. would ask. Yeah, so you, you use cycling as a mode of getting around. Yep. And yeah. And so I, I do that in the summer a bit, but it's also constant la- constantly layered on top with um, me being uh, my my life being controlled by my Apple Watch and telling me to do my move goals and exercise <laughs> goals and whatnot. So it's it's also a form of exercise for me. So uh, that's that's why I, I, I think we approach biking a little bit differently, but there's definitely a lot of overlaps as well. So I I have been borrowing a bike trainer from my manager for the last uh, few months and I returned that actually today just before recording this uh, because I had uh, found that REI had the kicker snap on sale again it was over it was sold out because cycling has been very popular this last year with the pandemic and so I think a lot of these accessories were sold out as people wanted to continue that in the winter and whatnot Um, especially recently when it has been very cold in the Twin Cities here. Um, I've been using it so I don't have to go outside and freeze as much and, you know, just mixing it up and then maybe stay a little bit in, in shape for biking uh, throughout the winter. And then yeah, I can it's, like... It's been yeah. tough to like kind of stay ahead of those, you know, like trends. Um, you know, if, if you thought ahead of like, oh yeah, everybody's going to be buying indoor bike trainers when it starts to get cold, like maybe I should buy one during the summer. <laughs> um, but it's hard, it's hard to think ahead for those kinds of things. Yeah. Well, and so I, I was, I was ready to buy an even more fancy one that like wasn't a, it was one that you would take your wheel off your bike and mm-hmm. attach it directly to the trainer. But those are like eight, $900 or more. And I'm like, I don't know if I'm that into it. Like they're quiet. It's probably better for my neighbors in my apartment building, but um, it's, you know, that's another level. And so I I heard good things about the the kicker snap and uh, I was able to borrow another one in the meantime. So once it came in stock, I was able to buy that. Um, And so I I have been uh, saving up my credit card points. So I'll just preface by saying this, this retails at $500. I spent a total of $36 on it because I, uh, had $500 in REI gift cards for my credit card company. So like that is money I am paying and like it is actual money and things, but uh, the, you know, it's kind of pushed to the side and I don't really see it. So I got a good, uh, good deal or whatever, if you will on this. So that has helped with me being able to justify something like this. But uh, what, it, what is it? Wahoo kicker snap. So it's a bike trainer. It's like a, a, a triangle kind of shaped thing that sits on the ground that you, um, mount your bike on with the tire so the tire has contact with this like steel little roller disc in the back and um, the axle of the wheel is clamped on by some hub things and so your bike tire is sitting an inch or two off the ground and it when it spins it spins a big flywheel which is you know like 12 pounds or something i think on this one and so um, you can you can pedal and it this is a smart trainer so there's electronics in there and you plug the trainer into the power and it connects to your phone over Bluetooth, and it will keep track of how much speed you're going, um, and you can set the resistance of the flywheel. So it's not just constant. You can uh, do different, like a zero to nine scale, or you can do a, 
I think a resistance percentage, or you can do a target power. So like 150 watts or 200 watts or whatever you want. Um, you, there are even profiles in there for different types of bikes with certain mm. wind speed hitting you and a certain incline percent. So you can kind of simulate all these different scenarios and have different resistances. So it, it's nice that, uh, you know, you can have a, a workout or a session on the bike where you're not constant, the exact same pace the whole time. The, the trainer that I was borrowing from my manager was that, that it was didn't plug in. Maybe there's a way to adjust it, but I didn't have a manual. And so I, I never adjusted it. And that was pretty low resistance. So it was pretty loud in my apartment. And mm. I'm in an old building. I feel bad for the people living below me. So I would really try to like be done biking by 8 p.m. or something. Uh, you know, do it during the daytime when people aren't sleeping and whatnot. But this one is is loud too. But when the resistance is higher, I'm not going as fast. And so it's a little bit lower, but uh, there's definitely a little vibration from the knobs on the tire hitting the, the steel roller disc thing. Um, so in addition to being able to tell your speed and whatnot, it can integrate with other apps. So there's a big old app that I think the most popular one is called Zwift, which mm. is a subscription. I think it's like $15 a month or something. I've never used it. I know a lot of people who, or I know of people who use it and it lets you do like virtual rides. So they have routes and things and you're biking with, I don't know, dozens to hundreds of other people and they have little avatars on the screen it's this virtual world so you like yeah it's, it up it's to a, a little TV. video game yeah yeah basically a biking video game and so you can do different routes and you're biking with others and um and those have i think like different elevation and things so it'll adjust the resistance on your trainer based on the course which makes it a lot more maybe realistic i don't know yeah yeah I'm I've, not, I've heard people yeah. talk about like uh that it even simulates like drafting off of people so if oh, you interesting. yeah yeah if you if you like slot yourself in behind another one of these virtual riders um then you know the resistance will go down a bit yeah and uh wahoo makes a device that will physically lift and lower your front tire so you can and so you can take off your front tire and mount it to this device <laughs> and so you can have dynamic resistance on your back tire and then physically raise and lower your front tire as well uh, so there's the whole system they have they would love to sell you i just uh have it on like a plastic mount thing or a thing that my tire just sits on and i have like a box fan pointed at me so like yeah to keep me cool but uh, wahoo does make a fan as well i don't know if that's a smart fan or not <laughs> Uh, this is a whole like flight simulator setup <laughs> yeah basically uh i you know i i enjoy i enjoy biking and things and this is more of like an exercise thing so i don't want to go all the way in because that's like it's a lot of money but it's a lot of space and time and effort and like i don't know i'm not that serious about it i just want to yeah. bike to to stay a bit in bike shape and to have a way of working out when there's a pandemic and um i don't want to like go in my apartment buildings start gym and things like that so yeah 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 and like and if you if you're somebody who's not going to be biking outside during the winter like um you know the an indoor bike trainer is pretty much the only way that you can go about that because even if you even if you like maintain a running schedule a running habit during the winter like that's a completely different muscle set um you know, you're like the next time that you get onto a bike, you're going to get like saddle sores the first week that you're on yeah, whatever. Yeah. Um, so this, you know, this is definitely, I think, the the best way to go about that, like keeping in shape uh, for, for cycling. Yeah. And it's just it's it's a nice way to mix it up. You know, I've been I walk around Lake of the Isles here in Minneapolis I don't like a hundred times last year. And so that's my kind of normal route and things, but it's nice to mix it up every so often because that gets tiring, especially if I walk around the lake like four days in a row, I'm like, I'm sick of it. I need a day or two <laughs> off. And so it's nice to like break it up with a little bit of biking. But at the same time, if I use my bike trainer like three days in a row, I'm really tired of that because <laughs> it's just like the same thing. And um, yeah, so just a little variety is nice. Um, and I, I like to watch, I've been uh, trying to watch Star Trek Next Generation this year in 2021. It's my goal to finish the, or to, to watch the whole show. And so I've been watching, I'm still in season one, just about done, but um, I've been watching those episodes as I bike. So I pretty much bike for the duration of one Star Trek episode, which is usually around 45, 42 minutes kind of a thing. So it's like a perfect amount of time. And it's that's usually about 400 calories for me, which is usually enough to fill my move goal on my Apple Watch. Uh, with whatever I'm walking around my apartment and that kind of stuff. So, and that's a really uh, good way to just like keep your mind occupied while you're doing that. Yeah. yeah. And then like, it's, you know, something to watch and then I can, you know, zone out and like go on Twitter or something too at the same time or whatever. So, um, yeah. 
So that's been nice. I have a couple of questions about this product. Um, so, you, so for mounting it, you said that like, the like the the tire obviously rests against the the like um, the metal runner at the back, and then it the do, do you have to like take the axle off of the tire in order to attach it to the the parts on the side? So uh, it came with um, uh, well, it's not technically an axle; it's a, one of those. Uh, what do they call it? A um, it's like a quick release. A skewer. Like, a skewer is what yes, they call it. Yes, that's yes, that's yeah. So it comes with a skewer that is just like a clamp one. It actually doesn't clamp very close to the frame. It like kind of sits out. So I'm gonna put my stock one back on after the winter. But um, so it just it clamps around that, and so you kind of and um, you adjust the stand ah. so it's the right width to your bike. You put it on, and then there's like a lever that it'll clamp down, so it kind of squeezes it. Um, and then the the steel. Um, cylinder thing that goes against the tire then you you, you tighten a, another knob to bring it closer to the tire and then you apply the pressure on the tire and then i kind of just like take i physically hold my tire and spin it up and down a little bit just to see how much it's going to slide and then if it slides a bit then i tighten it a little bit more so so the skewer that comes with the wahoo kicker you're saying that like that is a skewer that you could use on the bike under normal circumstances yep. outside interesting it looks, okay it looks like a normal skewer and I, I think you can use a normal one. It just that my stock one has a quick release valve on one side that is completely flat over the mm-hmm. top of the the edge, so that you can't hook anything onto it because it's just this flat plate that right. you clamp open and close. So I needed a third a third party or you know another one. So it came with one, so that was perfect. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. That's nice. I like that. Um, yeah. And then okay, so the other question that I thought of is like. It seems like the, the 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 only way to really control like the resistance and everything for this thing is through the phone app pretty much. Is that correct? Yes. Yeah. So then yes. so I imagine that you would like the easiest way to to get that functionality to get those controls near you is if you have like a phone mount on your on your bike already in the cockpit area. Yep. Right. And I, I do have a phone mount for just like using for maps and stuff when I bike yeah. outside normally. So I've been I've been using that. It's, it's my second one. My first one uh, broke at a 15 mile an hour bump and it just snapped off and my phone got a little scruffed up. But replace it with the same one. Um, and if people want to, you know, hear some reviews of different phone mounts, uh, we've got a few of those on here on Second Opinion. So we'll put links to those in the show notes. Shameless promotion. Um yeah, so I have the phone mount. I so it's the Wahoo Fitness app is what I use to record it. And so that app also lets you update the firmware and pair all these devices to it. In addition to the snap, or the kicker snap, I bought the ticker heart rate monitor, which is a chest heart rate monitor. Um, it connects to my phone with some Bluetooth and um, it runs on like a CR2032 battery. So I think it lasts like 50 hours or something. Then I have to replace the battery. Uh, there's a little bit of a fancier one, the ticker X, which I think lets you store stuff in memory. So you can like, I think it's more towards like running. So you can go on a run without having your phone with you and it'll track your heart rate and accelerometer and stuff. And there's an armband heart rate monitor that does charge with USB, but it isn't quite as accurate as a chest one. So it seems, and it was more expensive. So I just wanted the basic ticker heart rate monitor, you know, the cheapest one that's easy to pair. And that's because, um, I have an Apple Watch. I'm a big Apple Watch user, and that has a heart rate monitor on it. But um, the Wahoo Fitness app doesn't doesn't have an Apple Watch app, and you can't record the Apple Watch stuff without an Apple Watch app. So I think it's kind of a way they're uh, encouraging you to buy their heart rate monitor to record heart rate data instead of using the Apple Watch. Uh, that's how I take it, at least. I think there are other apps like Zwift does have its own Apple Watch app, so I could probably use Zwift to record heart rate and then pair it with the Wahoo Kicker Snap to get the bike speed and power and that kind of stuff, but I I kind of don't think I'm going to do Zwift. I like watching TV or YouTube or something, and that's fine with me. So um, that thought, you know, why not just buy the heart rate monitor? I can use that for walk, like I can use that not just for indoor cycling as well, so yeah, I don't know. We'll see. Do, do any of these... Um does does wahoo's like recording software uh let you upload to strava it does uh wahoo i think has some of the best integration with uh other fitness apps out of Mm -hmm. all the options out there um i'm trying to pull it up now 
but I think it lets you record to, actually I can open the app, that might help. Um, it goes to like My Fitness Pal and Strava and Apple Health. And um, let me pull up the list here. Ride with GPS, Training Perks, uh, Relieve, Commute, Today's Plan, Run Keeper, Cycling Analytics, Sport Tracks, My Fitness Pal, My, Matt My Fitness, Two Peak Dynamics Training, and Dropbox. And Dropbox. The .fit file. So I, this might be a proprietary one. I'm not exactly sure. but So I connect it with Strava and the Apple Health Framework. So it connects to my Apple Watch and stuff. So What a perfect file extension, though. .fit. Right? Yeah. I really I should record it and, and see what what is actually in there it's probably a massive xml file and super gross but you never know was that was that a separate app that wahoo uses to grab stuff from the heart rate monitor or does it like nope it's the same wahoo fitness app okay so i just have one app that does that yeah that makes sense welcome to the ecosystem yeah now i did try briefly there are some third-party apps on the ios app store that let you record stuff with its own apple watch app passes through to the iPhone and the iPhone broadcasts itself as a generic heart rate device and then you have Wahoo running on an iPad or something else you connect all your your Wahoo bike trainer and record the Wahoo thing there and then connect to your iPhone over Bluetooth as if it were a heart rate monitor which is proxying the Apple Watch to do it uh, I tried that once and it was super shoddy and difficult to connect and I'm like I would rather just spend fifty dollars on a chest heart rate monitor and have it be a lot easier so yeah i gotta say um i hate everything that you just said (laughs) yeah (laughs) i tried it like uh no and this app was a free app and it um before it lets you connect you have to watch a 45 second ad and these are like the the super super (laughs) awful like terrible cookie cutter ios game ads that like drag the drag the thing so the fish gets in the water you know those ads they're so bad and i had to sit through a 45 second one of those to try this out i'm like no i am not doing this so i just spent 50 dollars. which um you know for this whole this whole combo only spending about 80 dollars on it and i used part of an amazon gift card i had so like i really was saving most of i think i spent 50 bucks of my own money on both of these devices total after all of the gift cards and credit card points ahead so that sounds like uh, a no-brainer yeah i don't know if i would have gotten all of this if i hadn't done that because really like my apple watch for monitoring it as well as a bike trainer like there are a lot of like 150 fifty dollar bike trainers out there that are i think they're a lot cheaper but they do have like a, a cable tension thing that you can adjust the resistance mm. and so i think that would work i it probably would be uh i would imagine the the coasting speed down time would be very short because it's a lot of those are like the resistance of a strap on a on a wheel mm-hmm. for adjusting the resistance and it's how tight it is around it kind of like a brake or something and so those those aren't very realistic for like coasting and things like um and, and i a bet flywheel that, keeps going so that, that would probably wear down uh a lot faster than than this flywheel system yeah you know and like i've probably- used those in one place my 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 work's office when i <laughs> remember the offices um <laughs> where they had like a uh, a bike desk kind of a thing. And so it was this like, it wasn't a real bike. You had like a desk thing on the front where you could put a laptop and you could sit on a chair and it would, yeah. and you were spinning this this wheel all on a strap. And so you could like, you had a knob that would like ratchet between 12 different settings and it would just adjust the resistance on that wheel with the strap. And so like, you know, you, don't, you can't really coast for more than like two seconds before it stops on one of those things. For this, mm. the, the kicker, to, to be accurate, I think the kicker snap uh, says it's within 3% accuracy for speed and things. And so they want you, before every time you do it, to do a spin down where you pedal up to 22.4 miles an hour. And then once you hit there, you stop and you let it coast all the way down to 10 miles an hour. And it keeps track of the amount of time there to, to gauge and calibrate itself because your tire pressure is always changing and that kind of adjusts, you know, the accuracy over time. So um, they they strongly encourage you to do that before you you ride every time so and it looks like i'm looking at 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 the you know the specs uh down at the bottom of the product page it looks like it it's compatible with most most uh uh bikes that that you might want to put on here you know all the way from 700 c tires to uh 26 inch wheels 650b like all of the the main sizes of of wheels are are 
supported here. Um, something yeah. about through axle uh, dropouts makes it a little bit more difficult to be compatible with some type of. I don't know what twelve by one forty two means. Yeah, I don't really know, and that must be about how it mounts into the trainer with the kind of the clamp over the yeah skewer kind of thing. But yeah, it's um, it's it's nice. I've I've enjoyed it a lot. I'm going to use it right after we're done recording here, and uh, nice. I think they do recommend using a flat tire on it. And they probably will sell you one too if you want, but I've just been using my existing tire on it, which probably makes it a little bit louder and more vibrating because it isn't completely smooth. Right. But, uh, yeah, whatever. and I, and I have heard from people that like you can you can wear down uh, a tire a lot faster by using it on an indoor trainer. Um, I don't remember why that was, but like sidewalls cracking or something. Maybe uh, I don't know. Like, I always keep my pe- my tire pressure at uh, near the max of it, so it's a little mm-hmm. a little smoother. I like to think, um, but like this whole winter, I'm gonna put probably no more than a few hundred miles on it total. So like in the grand scheme of things, you know, asphalt's probably worse than whatever I'm doing to it on the trainer. So, but especially asphalt with uh, all the winter salt <laughs> yeah. right now. Yeah, definitely. That being said, I really need to oil my chain, and um, it's starting to get pretty noisy here. But that has to happen anytime. So yeah, that's uh, that's the Wahoo Kicker Snap and the Wahoo Ticker. Um, what a what a great pair of um, product names too. They it's it's that like retro late two thousands kind of thing where they don't have the e. It's k k i c k r and t i c k r. So it's it's kind of fun. It's like, like I, Twitter. I, I, I gotta wonder what other kinds of what other products do they have in here that have a cute name like that? Yeah, that's a uh, okay. The kicker climb is their elevator. Kicker headwind is their fan. Um, oh yeah, the kicker the kicker headwind does pair with your smart trainer and heart rate monitor and stuff to do variable intensity wind. It's mm. <laughs> uh, amazing. Oh yeah, does so so the heart rate monitor um, obviously like you want it so that you can record your heart rate because that's a useful thing to know. But like, yeah, d- does that feed back into like what the, what the trainer is doing in any way? Um, I don't think the trainer listens to heart rate, but the app pulls in both sensors at once. So it, it shows right. me my heart rate with my speed and the power and the time and the distance, and that kind of stuff. Um, so it, it does compute like difficulty zones based on my heart rate but I think the heart rate and the speed are kind of independent things. But like together, they're part of the same workout data as I export to the Apple Health Framework or to Strava. Mm-hmm. But I don't think they work together so much because your power is constant no matter how hard you're working. It's because it, it can directly say, you you are this much weight and you are moving at this speed. That is equal to this amount of power. Like that's a constant right. no matter how hard your heart is working. So I don't think they, they do too much together. But it's data that I like to know and learn about. So yeah, yeah, and I yeah, it, it's very strange to me the way that like power output uh, can be very, very different from what your body feels like it's doing. Yeah, um, like I I rode along with Risa one time when they were doing a very specific like interval workout where they like they had to maintain a particular like power output for so long and then like change the power output and, you know, and then come back down. And, um, yeah. and, and like when you start going up a hill, it's like, Oh yeah, your power output is way, way higher. Even if you're going at like a lower speed. And I'm like, my leg, that's not how my legs feel right now. My, my legs feel like I'm working less hard because I'm not going as fast. <laughs> yeah. But you're, you're fighting gravity and like, yeah, yeah. it's, it's it's different yeah um which is weird when you're indoors and everything is kind of flat and you just put the different resistance because yeah uh you can target power output and so if i pedal faster the resistance might be a little bit lower if i pedal at a very low speed it might actually bump up the resistance if i i gear down and then it's like it's wild pedaling at super low gear with a high power output because you're like you like you don't coast at all because it's resisting so much and you're like mm-hmm. this doesn't feel right but <laughs> i i guess i don't know so it's it's a little bizarre 
I definitely prefer biking outside. It's a lot more natural. And I, I find biking outside is a lot easier because you have the wind and you can coast more and uh, it's more entertaining, even though I'm watching Star Trek. Um, <laughs> but yeah. Yeah, the um, the power output is lower than I would maybe expect. But it, my speed is definitely lower than how I feel like I'm working. Like I feel like I'm pedaling at a speed and I'm like, my heart rate's going up pretty high and I'm working hard and it's like, oh, you're going like 14 miles an hour, which is maybe my average, but it's different going 14 continuously for 40 minutes versus when I'm biking around the city where like my quote unquote normal speed might be 16, 17 miles an hour. And then I have a few spots where I coast or slow down to stop and things. And so that brings my average to 14. But I feel like when I am biking, I'm biking at way higher speed. And so it's just like a difference of, of that data because yeah. Like, yeah, versus how I, I feel. But does it have any settings for like simulating different like weight, like you know d- different amounts of like cargo that you might be hauling or anything like that? Uh, nothing about cargo. It you can put in the weight of you as a as a person, right? And it it asks for your your uh, your sex, your height, and your weight, and so you put that in and that must, I think that calibrates it a bit. I was looking up some of their formulas they do for their power output. They, they take um, male or female for some of their ratios for power Mm -hmm. output um, combined with weight and height, but very cool. Yeah. It's definitely a fun quarantine purchase, but I'll hopefully have this for quite a while. And yeah. Yeah. I'm, I'm happy that you found something that's working for you so well. Yeah. It's uh. When I first bought it, I was like, are you kidding me? I can't use my Apple Watch for heart rate. Like, why even bother tracking my speed? Like, the heart rate data is what is interesting because, like, that I have five, six years of heart rate data. And so, like, I can correlate it and I can go back and look and stuff. And so I wanted to see, like, how hard I'm working because that's, that's a better reflection of how hard I feel like I'm working versus speed or something. And so I'm like, fine, I'll just buy a heart rate monitor. <laughs> What's another few dollars, I guess. But. Yeah, so now that I have it all, it's it's kind of nice to use. So we should get recommend. some uh, some pictures of you wearing the heart rate sensor, like they have on the product page here. You know, uh, some gr- gratuitous shots of your torso. Oh yes, it's a it's a delightful sight. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, well, uh, that's that's my review and thoughts on the Wahoo Kicker Snap and Wahoo Ticker. You can find some links for this in the show notes. Uh, I have a link to each product page. Um, yeah, if you want to hear about it from me or get any updates, uh, you can find me on Twitter at Brian Mitch L. I'm also on Strava, which is probably relevant for something like this. Um, uh, I believe my Nick or my username there is also Brian Mitch L. Um, yep. Can confirm. Uh, so you can find me there. Um, otherwise my website, brianm.me probably won't be talking about this on my site, but you can find what I'm doing there. Uh, what about you, Ian? Yeah, I'm Ian R. Buck. You can find me on Twitter as Ian R. Buck, where um, I do I do talk a lot about bikes and about bike advocacy stuff and all that jazz. Um, you do, and I love it. Keep it up. And if you wanna if you wanna see recordings of like you know my trips to the grocery store and fun stuff like that, you can find me on Strava as well, um, where I, I'm probably just Ian Buck. And here on Second Opinion, in addition to the like the phone mounts, uh, I've reviewed a lot of different like bike accessories uh, over the last year. So um, I think I'll probably just like link to a playlist of all of those episodes um, if people are interested in that. Yeah, and this episode is uh, released under a Creative Commons license, so you can use it remix it whatever just provide some credit back there's a a subreddit if you want to discuss this episode which is reddit.com slash r slash the nexus tv also twitter.com slash the nexus tv uh and if you like what we're doing here at the network swing on over to our patreon which is patreon.com slash the nexus tv thanks for listening have a good one have a good one The Nexus, the Nexus, the Nexus TV podcasts from from the the technological technological convergence. convergence. You are about to become obsolete. You think you are special, unique, and that whatever it is that you are doing is impossible to replace. You are wrong. As we speak, millions of algorithms are frantically running on servers all over the world. 
with one sole purpose, do whatever humans can do, but better. But all is not lost. Look for the audiobook, Robots Will Steal Your Job, But That's Okay, at thenexus.tv, or by searching in your favorite podcast player.